that sold up one of his restaurants, had some money from that, and you know, that's just a great family restaurant. My dad said, like, you won the lottery and you won a lion. <laughs> He yeah. was like, great, a lion, what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? You can kill me or yeah. like, eat me, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what it was. This is Startup to Storefront, the podcast where we talk to business owners and entrepreneurs about the untold challenges of scaling a business. Welcome to the podcast. We're here with Bricia. What a legend. (laughs) Bricia is co-owner of Galagetza, a James Beard Award winner here in Los Angeles in Koreatown. She's an author, new author, and just launched Mama Rabbit in Las Vegas. Yes, I did. Which is unbelievable. So how did you get how did you get started in the whole food world? Does Nescal count as food? Eh, Does to me. It's yeah, food and yeah. beverage. Food and uh, beverage. Well, it's in your belly. I always mm-hmm. tell people that my food journey started the moment I was born because of where I was born. In Oaxaca. Yeah, I was born in Oaxaca. Born and raised. Both my parents. You know, I come from. You know, both parents in Oaxaca. Both grandparents, grandparents. Long, long tree of you know. Pure Oaxacanists. Okay. And I think that when you're from Oaxaca, your relationship to food is very different than being born elsewhere in Mexico. Why is that? Um, I truly believe to my core that the south of Mexico has just like a special, not just relationship to food, but the food down there is so different than the northern part of Mexico. Okay. Yucatan, Puebla, Oaxaca, they are all very distinctively different than anything else. Okay. When you're in Oaxaca, I think even the poorest of the poorest of the poorest eats better than anyone else in the country. <laughs> you know, they grow. And everything there in Oaxaca, the, amazing. the land is so luscious. There's so much diversity, not only in, in, in spices and herbs, but it's just the soil is so rich. So okay. if you throw a couple of seeds out in your backyard and next week you'll have this herb no one ever heard of and it's delicious. Like it's, Amazing. it's one of those places. Okay. So the relationship to food is just so, we're, you're so tight. Food is such a special part of your daily routine every single day. Um, obviously everyone has to eat, but there's, there's community around food. It's not just okay. something, you know, had I been born and raised here in LA or in any big city, you know, your relationship to food, it's very fast, right? You just eat yeah. in between or sometimes you forget to eat. Like, I'm, No one enjoys to eat, really. Like, They're just no like, it's, a, it's, a, it's like, let's just eat. finish no. this. We yes. can go back to work. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Or drive through. Like, I didn't know drive throughs well, were a I thing. Wow. I didn't even realize What an American like, concept. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think, like, that's when my relationship started with food. My mom is an incredible cook. My grandma, you know, my mom made a home meal for me every single day growing up. Every single day I had a different agua fresca. Oh, every single wow. weekend my, my grandma killed a chicken. You know, every other weekend we had a huge party. Killed, you know, killed, with <laughs> killed with love. To feed the family. She was a very angry woman too. Like, <laughs> she so maybe like, not. Ah! She like really enjoy that. What, what um, brought your family to the United States? What was necessity, the... Necessity. I think the, what, people, what makes everyone move, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not lack of food. It's lack of opportunity. Okay. And lack of being able to provide, you know, for your family. Uh, and did you all come 94. over together or no 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 so it was 94 when we lived in Oaxaca my dad for a living made mezcal and sold mezcal this is the oh, 90s the originator this is in the 90s when no oh. one cared about Whoa. mezcal. wow yeah uh, my dad actually opened the first ever store mezcal store that he branded here in LA no 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 in, in Oaxaca okay in Tule. Like, before people used to sell Mezcal everywhere, but there wasn't a store, like a brand, like a brand store. So my dad had a little store in this town called El Tule, and in the outside painted his logo everywhere and only sold his brand. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, and, like, and so you go in there and you could only find his mezcal with his brand. And that was, no one had ever done that before. It's like going to a winery or a distillery. <laughs> right, but it, there wasn't a distillery, it was just a storefront. Amazing. Um, so that's where I, that was my first job with my sister. Working in the mezcal shop. Working in the mezcal shop. Um, my dad would always siphon mezcal like from a hose, and that's how he would fill up the bottle. How much is a bottle of mezcal? Or how much were you guys selling oh, a bottle you know for? What? I don't remember. I would have to ask my dad that question. I don't want to lie. Yeah. But, uh, you don't want to nothing, date yourself either. And not three hundred dollars a bottle. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so it was. It, that's what we did for a living, but. It was just very hard work, you know? Like, it's just a lot of labor, a lot of driving. My dad used to, you know, drive 
his production in this huge truck from Oaxaca to different parts of the state selling and the people wouldn't pay him he would go back and you know it's just the life of a merchant yeah um, and and you um, were all helping I assume yeah the whole family we were, we were always in the family business okay um, and my aunt at the time lived in LA she'd moved a few years before yeah and we all knew of the aunt that lived in LA she would come here and there um, bringing you gifts Yes, right. Bring in American yeah, treasures. American treasures. <laughs> and she had an American son, too. He was like a white cousin. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, so oh, my, da- my dad moved with her in 93. No, 94. Where in LA was, uh, was, was that? Mar Vista, okay. Culver City area. Got it. Uh, he moved and he didn't really know what to do. My, my, my aunt used to clean homes. And my mom started shipping things to my dad, like basic Oaxacan pantry necessities, like things that you would not think that people would miss from their country. Okay. Obviously, everyone had tortillas, but no, like to this day, we still import playudas or these corn tortillas that are made in Oaxaca. So my mom would ship them to him. Is it because the taste is just so much so different? Di- so texture, taste, everything you want to say, it's just it's just not the same. Got it. So we, my mom would ship grasshoppers, oh playudas, mole. Chocolate, I think back then even meat, oh. bread, just everything that you would find in the store. Yeah. Um, we I would go with my mom, I remember, to the market, buy these things, put them in boxes, ship them to Tijuana in the in the plane, and then my dad would pick them up, drive to Tijuana, pick them up, drive them back to LA, wow. and then take them to people's homes. Oh. Same thing he was doing with the mezcal, okay. but like now he was doing it with you know, with food in a smaller little truck. And he was selling it. Yeah, like yeah. a merchant, door to door. Got it. Okay. So they're selling dictionaries. Yeah. Or, He's selling uh, items that yes. people can't get. Yes. Or, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um, encyclopedias. So people used to sell encyclopedias or yeah. more. So it's such a selling, good story. Wow. So yeah. my dad was selling um, mis- things. Like groceries. Like groceries. Wow. Yeah. And I think people in Southern Mexico, or even just in Mexico in general, there's a very entrepreneurial spirit because everyone, it makes more sense for you to go out there outside your house and sell naranja or sell sure. tamales in the street or sell food then for you to go get your job because it's such a low paying wages in Mexico I mean the economy you, is so different it's so yeah. different that it makes sense for if you have a skill in food and people like your food you will make a lot more money than getting a job putting up shop every day and then trying to figure out working at home you know? and yeah. was your dad selling the products to <clears throat> was he like introducing these products to people that have never heard of them or was no, it no, no, the no. market he, okay. he, he was selling them to people who were from Oaxaca who Got were living it. here at the time and they just missed the goods and just missed it you yeah. know yeah. Mezcal too sure. um, and he thought oh, I'm just gonna go up there and just put up shop on the street which was a lot for my dad because in Oaxaca and Mexico when you do that it's when you're a street vendor it's not it's not being like a cool street vendor today, you know, it's not, it's not really a tacos, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, people are like, who's this guy? Yeah. Very wary. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, you yeah. just really like, humble yourself that you're mm-hmm. going to be in the street and selling to people. And my dad thought it was like a low, it's like my lowest point. I'm selling this. I'm like putting a shop in the street every single day. He had to pay, um, back then it was the MS-13, 18th Street. You used to pay them rent on the streets for protection. So wow. They wouldn't, so, you know, yeah. protection yeah. on the streets. I love the navigation of all of this. And That's then, really interesting. Yeah, and then he saw a little restaurant that was going to be up for, for lease. And he went home and he told his sister, what does this mean? Le hace. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> oh, that means <laughs> lease. It means it's for rent. For rent, yeah. He said, why don't we, why don't we like, do it? And... They thought about it for so long that by the time they made the decision, the place was already leased. Okay. Uh. And then he just regretted it so much. He couldn't think, he couldn't sleep. He would see that place every single day because he would sell right across the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at this point, is business going well for him? Is it like he's yeah, making money? Point, okay. So he, he's seeing the yeah, logical at this point, he's saying, need to expand. Yeah, like, it could be cool to open a place. Yeah. yeah. And he's sending the money back home or is he keeping yes, Yeah. No, no, he's sending a lot. I mean, okay. He was, he, my mom didn't work yep. uh, back in Oaxaca. And I mean, she worked at home sure, with us. And sure, yeah. Four kids, that's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, also packing the goods, sending yes. them over, there's work yeah. in that, yeah. Um, so he, he came to work one day, was setting up, and he realized that place wasn't open anymore. Oh. And then a couple of days later, the sign went up again. And he called right away, he got the lease, he figured wow. it out, he went in there, 
And the health department person said, if I was you, I'd ask for my money back. Like, you, this place is not going to work. Like, so many restaurants have come through here that never worked. Wow. Um, so he was opening up a restaurant. He's thinking restaurant. Okay. And he was determined to get it passed and yeah. through. Yeah, and he's like, well, I'm just going to, I mean, you know, I'm going to try. Yeah. If it doesn't work, then I'll just go back to selling food in the street. It's yeah. not a big deal. Right. So he did it, and then he just started, you know, little by little taking off. And selling more and selling more and every day, every single Is he day. cooking or who's cooking the food? No, he's not cooking. My aunt is not cooking. They found a lady, a woman okay. who was, you know, local. A my dia. mom. Yeah, my, <laughs> my mom also knew how to cook and was telling him this is the way it needs to be done. Mm-hmm. And then it got to the point where, you know, I think it's time for you guys to move to LA. Okay. Like, let's be real. Yeah. I'm not I'm not coming back to Oaxaca. And are you pumped about this as kids? Oh, me? Okay. Or are you like So this is different. Mm-hmm. So we are How old are you in this happened? So my sister's third my sister's twelve, I'm nine. My brother is seven, about to be seven. My sister, the youngest, is two. There's so many different reactions as children. Sure. The oldest cried, did yeah. not want to leave. She was about to be thirteen. It was her first year of secondary, so sixth grade. All her friends, friends were made. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's it, it's she she has her life there, and she was so close with all her friends. She has already. She's the you know she did not want to leave. Yeah. I was excited. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah, fuck this place. I'm out of here. <laughs> we're going to California. All my Hollywood <laughs> yeah. stars on TV. Yeah. All yeah. the Baywatch. Yeah. Later, and I'm gonna get myself a locker. I love it. I love you know, her. Uh, because I, I grew up watching Full House. Yeah, and right. And Uncle Jesse. <laughs> You're coming to Hollywood. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really Hollywood. I just wanted to meet Uncle Jesse. Of course. <laughs> like, I, you know, and just, I, I just loved, I loved watching those shows. And Did you guys know English or is it something? No, no, no. no okay. No, no, no. Okay. My sister and I used to pretend that we, we used to pretend play when you had to speak English. Okay. <laughs> In her room, um, like what? What are the kind of you, things you'd say? I just said gibberish. Yeah, and just pretend we lived in LA and we're sisters. <laughs> oh, that's so. So cute. basically, music and like TV were your kind of your the only time you really right, heard like it. Jackson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the videos that will come out of MTV that we would get. Yeah. Um, and that's it. You know, I mean, and here's what happens when you are born in Oaxaca at that time. You don't understand what you have. Right. Sometimes you leave that you're like, whoa, this is like, where's my food? Where's my people? Where are my friends? Why can I go outside? Why can we go visit grandma? Why can we walk on the street? Why do I have to look down when those people come by? This is like all these things that I, what I thought was going to, I want to go to this one every day. I'm going to yeah. see Mickey Mouse. I'm going to meet, you know, it was more about characters sure. yeah. as opposed to now we don't have a home. We live in this one bedroom in the spare bedroom of my aunt's apartment. You went from like land. Us. You had land a whole bit. Well, my, my, we had a very tiny house, but you know, we, my grandma's house, we would drive. Yeah. We, we would get a community. Outside. Yeah. I had a great community. We, we would play every single day outside. It was like kind of what you imagine a suburban, suburb, suburban, suburban, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Life would be, you know, yeah. all, all these kids were in the same Safe. street. I live in the end of a rotunda. We all play like tag and hide and seek. And, mm-hmm. you know, we had... Sounds like my childhood. <laughs> yeah, we had like pizza and get up for my skipper. All the moms, you know, we made food for everybody. That I, I think I had a fake wedding with my neighbor. And we played <laughs> That's so cute. And, you, know, you know, just like really, just really great, amazing childhood to we cannot play outside. We're stuck in the house every day. All we can do is watch TV. And our diet went from every single day my mom used to make us food to Doritos mm. and Zapatio and, you know, whatever we could find, you know. Yeah. Because my parents were in the restaurant all day and they couldn't have all four of us there. Yeah. Because yeah. it just was too hectic. Um, and it wasn't until later we felt like a little older that, you know, a couple of us would stay behind Two of us would go to the restaurant, you know, taking turns taking care of the youngest one who was only two. So my mm-hmm. older sister who was 12 became her babysitter. Yep. And then me and my brother were always fighting. So it was kind of like a very, but we were all very close because we lived in this sure. one bedroom mm-hmm. for a year. And wow. that was our life. So, so business was going well for your dad. Yes, business was going well. Um, you know, it was, you know, we were able to get out in our own apartment. 
then we moved to a different apartment that was full of clayudas everywhere and our job <laughs> was to clean the clayudas, you know. It was always working in the business. And then, then just kind of just being on our, you know, quote unquote our own. My my dad, they opened a second location. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, my aunt, my mom and my my parents and my aunt were partners at the time. They split and my aunt kept the location on the west side and my dad kept the location on the east side. Was it the same name or are they same name. Okay. They just, you know, Two different operations. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, my aunt decided to just move on from the restaurant. She didn't want to do restaurants anymore. A car crashed into her restaurant, actually. And she oh, my gosh. Was like, oh, oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then at that point, it just became a separate story of her life. You know, my dad started working really hard. At some point, had like four or five locations, wow. had three other businesses, and then lost everything. Like everything. Uh, like during the downturn? Or? Yes. Lost his house, lost his cars. Lost his wife almost. Just everything just was going to crap. Wow. And that's when, you know, we, we, my my sister, my brother, and I said, okay, like, if you guys retire today and leave, my dad sold off one of his restaurants, had some money from that, and, you know, you know, you guys can go to Mexico with, and then left us with, left us with a great family restaurant. Wow. To figure out what to do with. And how old were you at the time? I was 20... Four, twenty-five. Okay. Maybe? So you guys are thrust into so like running this business now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they we went were, home. Yeah, my, my dad said, was like, you won the lottery and you won a lion. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, Great, a lion. What the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? It's going to kill me or yeah. like, eat me, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what it was. Yeah. And wow. then you guys had to figure it out. So it out, yeah. at that point, you're with your siblings. Is it like... Okay, what are you good at? Or, are the, are, you know, you guys know each other well. And so. you've worked in the business for so long. Yeah, but I mean, we all worked. My dad always told us this, and I hated listening to this. My dad was always saying, you guys think you guys are working? You guys don't know what work really is. And I used to hate it because I used to think I was working. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm like, what else do you want from me? Like, yeah. I'm here all the time. He's like, you don't know what work really is like. Mm. It, was so true. it was so right, though. Because sure. once you left, you were like, oh, shit, it's what he was talking about. This yeah. is everything. This it's is, all on you. This is this is it. Like after this, what happens? You know? So how'd the first year go of you guys running this? You know, it was a lot of work, a lot of things. It's like every day we found something, something that we didn't know what was happening. <laughs> you know, whether it's someone knocking on our door was like, "Well, you owe us this," or hmm. uh, realizing that a lot of our staff was stealing from us. Oh. Um, how many people did you have on staff at the restaurant? I, think the, I mean, I think I said like 60-something. Oh, wow. Um, That's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of hands. And still multiple locations at that at that time? No, at that, just time, the one, at right? that time, we were, yeah, okay. it was down to one. And that's um, the one that you have now, right? That's the one that Same we one, Galagetza yeah, in Koreatown. Yeah, and then from there, you know, after a couple of years, we just got really excited. Things started happening. And I think at the end of the day, like everyone, I think my, our life is just, revolves around having relationships mm. and being good people and meeting the great people, meeting great people and fostering relationships with them that you never know where that's going to lead you in 10, 20, 15 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm so blessed to have a restaurant because so many people walk through the doors and I got to meet incredible people. Um, I met so many people in the industry and in LA has a great food industry. Mm-hmm. Everyone is really close. Everyone is, you know, we're, cha- we're a champion of the city, not of each other, not like ourselves. Right. Um, and championing each other is very important. I think I think the food community here is so great. That's was amazing. it difficult being in Koreatown? Like, did that take? Cause no, it, no. No, not for me. I think okay. I think being in Koreatown is amazing because that's the epitome of what Los Angeles is. Having a mm-hmm. Oaxacan restaurant in the middle of Koreatown in a Korean historic building. That really is, that could only happen in Los Angeles. It wouldn't yeah. be able to happen anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I, and I think we're such a great representation of, of LA. Absolutely. So then how many years would you say you guys are running it to where you feel like it's humming? Like you, you figured it out, you guys are... I don't know, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you never stop figuring stuff out. Okay. Because now, now we're dealing with other issues, right? Like now sure. it's, you know, now it's more about how do we... How do we just be? How do we stay relevant? How do we? How do we get? How do we continue to get better? How do we better the customer service? How do we? You know, when you're a restaurant that's been around for 25 years, and that's a long time. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty. That's very and difficult so for any restaurant. There's so much turnover in LA. Yeah. You know, and because every, other it's everyone a, it's wants an icon. to, and everyone wants to write about the new restaurant. Yeah. And yeah. Everybody's, you know, and it's ever changing. Trends come, trends go. 
uh, you know, new chefs come up, uh, new places open. New writers. And, yeah, new writers, new people, new staff. Uh, yeah, there's so much that in a city like Los Angeles, you can't, you just can't sleep. You can't like sleep on your business and think, oh, well, people like it, so it's going to be great. Yeah. Right. You, you know, you can't. You have to always be on top of, you know, what does your food taste like? What, you know, what are we using? Are we, are we still being profitable? Minimum wage rates being raised every That's single a tough year one. in LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not the same. Like when my dad was around, labor laws being so strict, uh, everything is so much, the rent's going up. Like there's so many different things that business is ever changing. If you cannot change with it, then before you know it, it'll, it'll just be gone. And that I learned with my dad. It's, it doesn't happen in a long time. It just happens in like a, a day, you know, when all of a sudden you turn around, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> wow. where's my business? Seriously. You know, that's how, the way it happens. How did you, I've, I've always wondered this. How does a restaurant get a James Beard Award? What has to happen? Is there like, you're nominated. Okay. They have to come. There's a committee. Or they so get there's, invited. So there's different, there, so there's different uh, categories within the James Beard Foundation. The award that we received is the American Classics Award. So it's very different than for the, everything is Best Chef, nor, Best Chef North, Best Chef West, Best Female Chef North, Best Female Chef Joyce, West, uh, West Power mm -hmm. Program, Best Design of the Year. So it's, there's some, and that's, you know, okay. it's so different. It's like the Oscars, Best yes. Picture, Best Act, blah, blah, blah. But then you get, you get these American Classics that they're not nominated. You just walk in as a winner. Like you're the only one that walks in knowing like you've already won. Wow. Everyone else walks in knowing that they're nominated and they may win, they may not win. You don't understand. Wow. The American Classics is, is based, there's a committee. They, and it's huge. I mean, this, they're, they're members from all over the country. And everyone submits uh, who they think would be a great American Classics recipient. Got um, it. Okay. And it so happens that whatever happened that year, a lot of people agreed that we were one of the restaurants. And got a phone call it was a voicemail and I started listening to it and I was gonna be like <laughs> and I thought they were trying to sell me advertising for, for, for the James, yeah, yeah, James yeah. Beard That's I funny. honestly when I, I was like I don't know I think they want to sell me something and, and they told you 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 want it the message was nothing that I wanted the message was saying about the James Beard blah 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 and I wasn't even called back I was like this is what trying to sell me advertising <laughs> or they want me to like buy something or you know yeah I mean Listen, when you own a business, it's very seldom people ask you to give you something. Mm -hmm. Right. When you own a business, everyone calls you because they have a problem for you to resolve or they want something from you or they're trying to sell you something. Yeah. Like, every time my phone rings, it's one of those three people. Yeah. So then does the committee come? Or? So then they, so then I got a phone call and, and I call back. And I was like, hey, I'm returning a phone call. And it was like, so you won this. Oh, wow. That one was like, excuse me? Wait, I'm so confused right now. And <laughs> they just kept going and I'm like, and they told me the only thing is that we ask that you don't say anything because um, this was in December. Okay. And they told me we cannot announce until March. So you know, one you had to keep it a secret. Yeah, we that cannot. Time. We cannot tell anyone. It's just completely like you know confidential. We can't allow any of this news to happen until the wow. foundation releases every all the nominees and they release the the recipients for the. You know, and at that moment, I just broke down crying. My brother was in the room. I was like, oh, my God. This is all, I mean, this is kind of one of those awards that I thought they were so far out of reach for me. Yeah. Because I'm not at a restaurant. When you win as a, a new chef, it's it's very different. They're basically giving it to someone who went to school for right. culinary. Right. You know, they have a new restaurant. They, they weren't apprenticed to some big name. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it's one of these things that as a restaurant tour, you know, design or you, know, you have to hire a great designer i mean there's these these awards are not for restaurants like us i didn't think wow so i i never even i thought it was so far-fetched but i always had it and you know my vision board of like one day one day what did your parents think i mean they left you my with this restaurant didn't even know what that was so, like, <laughs> <laughs> who's hummus <laughs> yeah no, he didn't know i was like yeah and he was like okay good for you guys like i don't know what to you know he had no idea <laughs> He didn't know what it was until we actually got to Chicago. Check this out. And then they told us what day the, the, the award ceremony. ceremony was in in May, I think. Like, oh, okay. wow. April or like. So they announced in March. Like, yeah, like first week of May. 
And then I was pregnant when they gave me the, the <laughs> when I was pregnant when they gave me the news. Oh my goodness. And then once I do my calculations, I was like, hold on a second. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have a six week old. At the time when you get the award. Wow. I'm gonna have, my kid's gonna be either four weeks or six <laughs> weeks. Yeah. Because you I, didn't know yet. I didn't know what time. I mean, my my due date was April 4th, so the award for I think for the first week of May. So I thought my son was gonna be three to four weeks. I just prayed about it. I was like, oh my God. That's I, tough. You know, what am I gonna do? Because, you know, in, in Latino world, you really cannot do anything <laughs> Latino world. until your kid's six weeks. No, my mom would kill me. Like, I, right. I take a trip to Target once and she almost, like, oh my she speak to me for, like, a day. <laughs> your first 40 days are the most sacred days you could have. You cannot put your body through anything. You cannot do anything the first 40 days. Wow. I turned 40 days a day a week out wow so, oh my goodness uh, that's so amazing my son stayed behind with my husband my husband didn't go to work show uh, and his mom um for that weekend and mom got turned for sure <laughs> i haven't had a sip of drink since you know two years at that point yeah and your whole family's with you right you your dad your mom us. siblings my parents and my three siblings the, the six of us went in oh Chicago. that's amazing it was so much fun we went to dinner and i think it wasn't until we were in chicago that my dad realized this is a big deal. And he was like, why am I going to have to get a tuxedo? I'm like, because this is a big deal. <laughs> He's like, okay. And is it like an award ceremony where oh, you're yeah, all like sitting? Okay. Yeah, so how's the food? Well, it's, it's actually seating. It's actually stadium seating. Okay. Afterwards, they open food for everyone. Like a caterer stations. style? No, okay. stations. It's okay. not like, like a food fest. Okay. But it's, the and there's like, man. like All the a, chefs. Well, not just all the chefs, but... All the champagne, all the wine, all the food, all the caviar, everything that you can Amazing. think of. Oh, beautiful. Like you turn left, right, and like you turn left, and like Jose Andres is there. You turn left, and like Wolf Van Cup Puck is there. Wow. You walk, and you're like, hey, Nancy. Hey, what's up, guys? Nancy wow. Silverton. I mean, like everyone, oh. everyone is there. That's everyone amazing. Is. And then, you know, we had one, so we were, you know, popular, and it was like the most, and my dad had to, had to get so drunk because he was so nervous because he didn't realize oh. like how big of a deal it was. He was like shaking, <laughs> and he went up on stage because he said he told us, "I don't want to go up on stage. Why do I have to go up on stage? Like that's not my restaurant anymore." Yeah, but he, it was so important for us that he received it with my yeah. mom. Sure, and he gave his um his speech in Spanish. Oh, amazing! And it was like the first Spanish, you know speech that was ever given on stage wow was like, what a great political statement and we were like no yo you just know how to speak english like, he, just, <laughs> he didn't choose this he didn't choose on purpose it was, it was a choice that is amazing though yeah. nonetheless yeah so it, was, it was really it was it was amazing to to go through that with my parents and and then my brother lost wow. the medal that night oh really <laughs> you don't have it or did you well, they, sent a new <laughs> they sent the new one wow <laughs> that's funny someone out there has a medal with the so what happens after that so so i guess wow. you get all this press all this attention i would imagine mm -hmm. and then does the restaurant dynamic change it's so different we are very you know our restaurant is again we're it's different right we're a family restaurant yeah the majority of our clientele is latino from oaxaca you know honestly the majority of our clientele didn't even know what james beard was either i mean right you know and and I think that's what we love that it gets us so much because we're not defined by James Beard or by press. I mean, it's great. I We love it. I welcome it. I know how important it is. Sure. Especially in the late so we can run it. But I think at the end of the day, the food speaks for itself. 100%. I don't think, like, I don't think an award should really define your restaurant or an article, right? Um, I think really at the end of the day is how do people, what do people feel when they walk in there? What's the atmosphere like? And what does the food taste like? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'll say Amazing. this much. If you haven't been to Galgatza, probably the best mole I've ever had in my See, life. So um good. The, the chocolate one. Do you have a, is it mole negro? Is that the name of it? Yes. Mole Unbelievable. Negro. Like, I feel like you're tasting history mm -hmm. when you taste it. There's a different That's level amazing. of complexity to it. I don't yes. know how you make it, but it's it, like really un unbelievable. We buy Doña Maria jars. Oh, really? That's the secret? I love it. <laughs> so, so you and your brother have this restaurant. You, you took it over from your parents. Absolutely killing it. And your sister yeah, as well. Yeah, so three your of you sister. out of the four are in, <laughs> are in the business, right? Huh? Three out of the four are in the business? Yes, three out of the four. My oldest sister, Paulina. Uh, then after that comes me. 
we're three years apart, and then my younger brother, Fernando, and the youngest, Elizabeth, who looks like my twin, yeah. she recently, uh, she used to work, she worked for us for about a couple of years, but, you know, family dynamics and business was not really for her. She okay. wanted to just work and do her own thing. Her own thing. And you and Paulina have a podcast, right? And me and Paulina have a podcast. Let's talk about Super that. Hamas. Yeah. What do you talk about on that podcast? Just a lot of personal mom, women stuff. That's we just awesome. Get, we just talk about like the realness of what it's like to be a mom, you know, and like sometimes you want to like not be a mom. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, I feel like that. Want to be a mom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so then you just launched Mama Rabbit. Yes, Mama which Rabbit at is- Park MGM yes. in Vegas. Yes. Congrats! That's it amazing. looks amazing. Thank if you guys you haven't seen it, follow at Park MGM or at Mama Rabbit. Yeah, at Trade Mama Rabbit on Instagram. How did how did that whole thing happen? Uh, so like you, like you, like I told you, Mezcal is a part of our life forever. You know, we were sort of pioneers of Mezcal in Los Angeles and met a lot of people throughout, throughout the years. There was an article in the New Yorker three years ago that was written about Mezcal and they talked a lot about me and the restaurant and our history. And then... Is that the one where you're like the queen of Mezcal? Yes, that's the one where the they... The queen like, of they Mezcal. Dubbed you. They hyped you up. Literally, I know. I honestly... I, you were the face. One, I had no idea. I had no, I had no idea that I was going to be a focus of the story mm-hmm. at all. I just went to Oaxaca because I wanted to show this woman where to go. To go to Mezcal. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, right. I wasn't even going to go to Oaxaca. I just last minute decision. I went to pick up the copy and it was a travel... I think it was a travel issue and it had a flap... And it said, journey to Oaxaca with a mezcal queen. And I was like, what the f-? That's <laughs> amazing. And I was like, wait a minute. Is it? No, I don't think you're talking about me. And then I open it up. And the article starts with, Grisia Lopez is a mezcal queen. And I stopped reading after that. I wow. Was like, I don't, oh, my God. I couldn't even read after that. Because I was like, oh. And it was a New Yorker, right? So it was like so huge. Big deal, yeah. yeah it's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. It's a huge. I mean, that that. I mean, do you have that frame somewhere? I don't have a frame, but I have it strategically placed in my house. So people <laughs> nice. come, mm-hmm. they sit down, and they pick it up yeah. randomly, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> oh Reese, I'm like, no, no, I don't know how you get there. Yeah. Do this for me. I haven't I even seen that. What, <laughs> honey? I what? told you to put this away. <laughs> so you start building a name for yourself in the yeah, Mescal I think, community. I think after that, but but I had already been very heavily involved in Mescal. I think that just was one of the one of the things that was written that really caught up the attention of a lot of people in a different sort of community. Yeah. And I never even thought the New Yorker would be interested in myself, to be honest, right? It does seem like a tangent for them, but that's pretty amazing nonetheless. Yeah. 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 And then fast forward a few years later, I just got this email from an anonymous source, you know, just <laughs> a cold email from my website that said, hey, we'd love to talk to you about a potential project surrounding Mescal, you know, in Vegas. And I get so many of these emails, so many times, I'm just like not interested. And I just said, okay, what else? But Vegas has always been on my mind since forever. Because it's at Vegas, I, you know, I called back, got emails back and forth, NDAs were signed, and they told me about the project. And I was just so excited about it. And, and are you dealing with the MGM executives or like a hospitality point, team? At this point, I was dealing with the design team okay. and a nightlife team. Okay. But just a couple of nightlife. I had a call with one of the directors and VPs of nightlife and over the phone and sort of going back and forth. And, you know, if I was to get involved, what that would look like, what I would want, what they would want, just to have everyone's, you know, expectations very mm-hmm. clean on the table. Yeah. And and do they, at that point, do they have like a, a set, do they have an idea, like a vision? Or are they bringing you in and, and hoping that you bring it to them? At this, at this point, they knew they wanted to do a tequila bar and they wanted to have an element of mezcal in it. But then, you know, if I'm involved, it would be myself first, if you let second. Totally. Mm-hmm. So that changed. Nice. And then it's been just such a journey to... How long? How long have you... since? I got the email in August. We signed in December and now we're opening in September. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's so super quick. Fast. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I was looking at pictures and I saw this video when I went to the space in February. Wow. And the space was gutted. There was nothing in just there. Just a shell. 
it's just they move so fast. Vegas moves so mm-hmm. fast. Yeah. They, they, every day counts. Every, they move so fast. Were you spending a lot of time there with the design team? We went to Oaxaca with the design team. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, together. That makes me happy because that's like so thoughtful of them. Yeah. To... No, all the, all the emails. All, I mean, all the phone. There was a lot of phone calls. Meetings in, in, in Vegas were more for to meet with executive team or... Okay. Um, press or you know because really what am I gonna I'm not gonna put a hurt on and like nail things to the wall <laughs> yeah. you know Same um, here. <laughs> but uh, but I will <laughs> yeah, but yeah. a month before that's really when a lot of the work begun and we have to go all the time and you know two months before we got a lot of artifacts made in Oaxaca and I shipped over so oh, nice. we're seeing all of those things yeah um, and just awesome. you know just making sure some of the mezcal was well represented and. And are you in charge of the bar program? Were you working with them on the bar I program? I worked with the with the corporate mixologist. His name is uh, Craig Schottler, uh, who is amazing and incredible. He comes from Aminia. And he's oh, just nice. like, yeah, he's such yeah. an incredible he, he's chef. Sounds background. like a legend. Sure. Yeah. Um, is there food there too? There is bites. Like light bites? Okay. Light bites. I don't want to talk about the food because it's such a small menu that I don't think it's... You're not going to go for the food. You're going yeah. to go for the... You're going sure. to drink cocktails. And mm-hmm. great Is there like a what's your favorite cocktail on the menu? Well, we have like a Galagetsa cocktail, obviously, Amazing. right? And that's mm-hmm. like the, <laughs> the spicy margarita version. I mean, we have this drink that is called Garo de Tigre, and, and Galagetsa is the number one seller. It's so funny because today I actually had training with my staff, and my staff was, was telling me, you know, a lot of people come and ask for a spicy margarita with the scalp. Well, yeah. We should have something on the menu like that. And you're like, we do. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about the ingredients of <laughs> margarita, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, what's the ingredients of margarita? I'm like, what's the ingredients of this one? Right, with chile, which makes it a spicy uh, yeah. margarita. A little mezcal mar, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, huh. Oh, also my favorite nice. summer cocktail. Yeah. I'm just like, how do we name this spicy margarita cocktail from the beginning? People would have a different idea of what mm-hmm. a mezcal spicy sure. margarita would be. But yeah. We named it something else. Anyway, I love the cocktail program there. I think, I mean, obviously that is why you should go. Yeah. But they're so innovative. Do they, do they, when they do, do they do tastings of mezcal? And then the little clay pots? Wow. They do, they do with the veladoras. Oh, really? The little candle glass? Oh, that's cute. And we do ceramic copitas for tequila. Um, yeah, okay. And the ceramic copitas oh, are made in Oaxaca, too. Amazing. They're beautiful. beautiful yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. It's a cool experience to see those, um, too. And we serve the mezcal both with citrus and agave with worm salt, the sal de gusano, and chocolate. Ooh, and chocolate. Mezcal and chocolate is the best pairing. People don't really? Like yeah, we do these, I haven't done that yet. Yeah, we do these really cool uh, Oaxacan chocolate truffles. Um, mm. The chefs from Park did these beautiful truffles with the Mama Rabbit logo on top. Oh, cute. And they give you your mezcal with your truffle. The yeah. art inside the space oh, yeah, is, yeah. like, unbelievable. I know. How did that come about? Well, Okuda actually was also pinpointed by the by the team. So I okay. didn't choose the artist. Okay. Um, it kind of already came with the package, per se. Sure. They said, you know, we have this artist that we really want to work with. Obviously, they say, are you okay with it? You, you know, I looked into it. I thought it was, like, the coolest thing ever. I'm like, yeah, he's great. It's beautiful. Yeah. He did send the first draft of his um, of his idea. Mm-hmm. There were a few modifications that we made just because of what the space was and what it meant. Mm-hmm. So um, the woman in the image, mm-hmm. if that was a different image, now it's like this beautiful indigenous woman that's just a representation of what I think beauty is. And then the three slot machines were different animals before but then they became the animals that they are now and yeah it's, it's amazing it's really cool and they're working slot machines that's really that's cool. so how big is that's so big by the way a dollar i'm like what happened to the five cent machines <laughs> I, yeah i do not i'm not gonna put a dollar in there no Sorry. no a Same. dollar means a lot to me yeah is there like that's a lease good. like how does yeah. that work in terms of do they have a vision for the space being there long term or how do they so how does that is, side is, of it is work is a park ngm property Mm-hmm. I am a partner, but I am not like the owner of the space. Yeah. So it's their team, their management team, and I'm a partner in it. Got I'm it. Not, I don't. I'm not the operator. They they operate it. They build. They. I mean, it's it's their space. Yeah. And then they decide when it makes financial sense to say like, 
it's not working. We need to tweak things. Sure. How can we make this better? But it's, you know, our job to make sure that they do well. Yeah. Uh, promotion, you know, being on top, like what, what, what else can we do? And keep it as authentic, but also understanding that it's Vegas. Yeah. Understanding who goes to Vegas and there's being idealistic and being realistic. And, and I've learned a lot from that too, you know, from it's only going to be mezcal. We're like, that's impossible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All of this one tequila, that's also impossible. You need yeah. to have gin and vodka and rum. Okay, right. great. So let's have a Mexican gin. Let's have mm. a Mexican rum. Nice. Let's, you know, let's have um, Oaxacan whiskey. Like, let's figure out a way mm. to incorporate these other spirits yeah. that people like. Of course, it's Maker's Mark. And of mm. course, it's Bacardi. And of course, sure. you know, it's Casa Amigos. Just because it has to. It's because, a brand. Yeah, people you know, And people people are going to call for that. And, mm. and, you know, there's a place for that in maybe downtown Vegas. But I think in Vegas, the Strip, you need to understand that this is how you make change, mm-hmm. you know? So okay. let's talk about, you have a book also. I have the book mm-hmm. comes out October 22nd. October 22nd. Yes. And October where can so. people find it? Recipe Everywhere. book? Everywhere. Everywhere. What's Amazon. in the book? And you partnered with, um, Javier Cabral is my co-writer. The gl- at I the Gluster, Gluster, right? Gluster. On yes. Instagram. Yes. The book, the, the idea of the book came out five years ago. The book agent walked into the restaurant and wanted to speak to me and said we wanted to do a book together. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. And then <laughs> it took me three years to sign that like contract with him. Like a publishing contract? Yeah, just like okay. an agent contract. Basically yeah. saying you cannot shop a book anywhere else with anyone else but with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, wait, no. It took me a year to, to sign the contract. And then it took me two years to give him a book proposal. Because I just, I don't, I didn't really have, I didn't know what the book would be, you know? It just so happened that at the moment where I started really thinking about it, because when I signed it, my son had just been born. So I wasn't really thinking about a book proposal. I just so so you podcast. sign it when you launch the podcast, you get the James Beard Award. All of this happens while your son yes. is being born. Yes. Wow. wow. I signed this, this, uh, this, this. The book deal. This book, not, not a book deal. Not okay. a book deal. I okay. signed a, uh, an agent, a book agent. He rep- got uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not really thinking about a book proposal. But, you know, here and there, he would check in. He was so patient with me. He would check in here and there, like, oh, yeah, that's right. He'd be like, hey, I found a co-writer yet. I'm like, oh, I'm looking for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. Or, hey, so here's a couple of I want to introduce and maybe meet. And I'm like, cool. Never met with them, you know? Sure. Met with one girl and I was like, hey, would you like to write a book together? And she said, oh, yeah, let, let, let me send you some things I've done. Never followed up with her. You know, it was one of these things where I knew what happened. I just... It didn't really feel right. Yeah. Did you have some material put together and then work with him? Or did you guys collaborate together and then start writing? Uh, with Javier? Yeah. So when no, when when I had lunch with Javier's girlfriend, she's been a friend of me for, from mine for, for a while. And I was telling her, you know, I should really get into this book. I should really got to figure this thing out. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's got to happen at some point. And she said, you should ask Javi. But Javi was working with Vice. And by contract, he couldn't work on anywhere else. I any, see any other project. Yeah. But he had just led by like two weeks before mm-hmm. her and I had lunch, and I reached out to him, and I said, "Hey, we should. I feel like you and I should do this. I didn't know that you weren't working at Vice anymore." And he said, "Yeah, let's do it." I mean, he's never written a book. I never written a book. Probably not the best decision for either <laughs> one of us to do a book with someone who's never done a book before. <laughs> or but, is it? But we did it anyway. We put the proposal together. He wrote it. We basically had phone calls to where I would tell him what to write, and then he would write it for me. And then I would read it and be like, this needs to be tweaked. This doesn't sound like me. This would be cool. This would be not. Um, the proposal was, I think, 20 pages, and it had 15 recipes. Okay. Nice. Um, and we hired these incredible photographers from Los Angeles to shoot pictures for the proposal yeah which was really above and beyond any proposal now looking back i you don't really have to do all that right, right? it would have been just like there. a you didn't have to do a quick the memo or anything. no 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 it's no, the, the concept yeah, insert the concept. photo of mole yes. here <laughs> correct correct but i would i took it super serious i even hired a designer on my own to put the book together and make it look pretty and amazing um, that's smart though because then yeah. you control the look and, yeah, yeah, yeah it's smart to do that and then Makes their and job then, easier. Yeah, and then we send that proposal to my agent. The agent then came back with edits. You know, this is to be changed. This, yes, this works. Yes, yes, no. I don't think, I don't think the publishers will like this. I think they will like this. Why don't we add this here? 
great. It was a proposal was done. We got them printed on a very nice paper and we send them in beautiful boxes to all the book editors in New York, LA, in San Francisco. That's really where the major ones are with their mole and the postal. And wow. um, they went out. My agent followed up. We got meetings with every single one of them. That's amazing. Well, not every single. I think 90% of the people we send their proposal to agreed to a meeting. We flew to New York, had meetings back to back for three days, went to San Francisco. Then the offer started coming in. And I didn't really know what a book offer looked like. Mm -hmm. I asked people, <laughs> fellow chefs, hey, so like more or less, like what, are, what am I looking yeah. at? Yeah. What and should this be? All, yeah, they were all over the place. <laughs> I got one. You got one. I got one out. from a publishing house um, that basically said, we're offering this to you, but you need to sign this like today. Like, uh, that's it. The classic. Wow. Pressure. Right. Yeah, sign now. Oh. And I told my agent, what do you think? He's like, if they're coming at you this early with this amount, you probably you probably want to wait out to see what other people say. Totally. Mm. This is like LeBron and Reebok. <laughs> and You're then, basically LeBron and Reebok. And then, I mean, I don't know if LeBron, I don't know if I was getting what LeBron got. <laughs> but, uh, then I called one of my great chefs who had one of my great friends who is a you know very renowned chef who published a book with them. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, I know it's a very personal question, but how much was your book deal for? This is how much they're offering me. Like, I just want to know like, yeah. if you'd be willing to just share this information. He's like, yeah, I got this. You probably won't get to it because they're starting at this for you. Yeah. Um, but there's so much more that you can negotiate. Cover, you know, release date. Mm -hmm. um, for the residual sales. Yeah, I, you know, all that stuff. And I said, oh, wow. And that was a very, it was a significant gap between okay. what they were offering me and what they had given him. Did, did he have like a much longer book or was it around the same? I mean, he, he definitely is a chef that has, you know, shows on television and, you know. A, he has a bigger presence. A, a bigger presence, okay. right? So Today. Uh, Today. <laughs> <laughs> well, so then I so then I kind of had that in my notebook. I was like, okay, so if he got that, then anywhere near that, I'm cool. I ended up getting a little bit more than what... The number that he told yes. me he got. What up? Yeah. Let's get at it. At the end, at the end. Who runs the world? <laughs> so, be honest. So, at the end of the day, uh, what, the, what happened was that I was starting, I, I held out, I had more meetings, and we actually had a bidding war between the book deal. And the way that works is the agents that want to were the middlemen. Mm -hmm. And sends out emails like, okay, we have this number. Anyone else wants to come in? And that whole day, editors are going back and forth with him like, this is our offer. And then at the end, it was between two, the original ones who lowballed me in the beginning and, this, uh, and, the other, and the other one. And I had no idea what to do because they were so close. But I ended up going with, there was a couple of reasons. The one was a publishing date. Okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, one, the one, the, the one that I ended up going with wanted a fall 19 release, which is where we mm -hmm. are now. And the other ones, I think, wanted a spring 2020 or a fall 2021. Oh, wow. Oh, got it. Um, That's so, so far away. Yes. We, well, not only far away, but actually it's normal. Being far away is normal. But you have a lot of momentum right now. Yeah. And I also thought spring is off the table. Like, if I'm going to go with someone, it has Holiday to be season, fall. too, yes. right? And, and the fact that you even would want to release in the spring yeah. makes me think that you're not really seeing the value of what I'm offering. Mm -hmm. um, and if you wait issues. all the way till 2021, a lot can happen. And uh, that publisher had bigger pockets. So I'm like, if you really wanted me, you really could have come for me. Yeah. yeah. And the other one, I know they were stretching themselves for me. Mm -hmm. And I was going to be their fall. That's great. Headline. So that's perfect. Yeah, awesome. they really wanted you. They committed. Yeah, to they it. committed. Same so, time yeah. frame. Yeah, and um, but aside from that, I you know the editor was amazing. Really vibe with her, and uh, we ended up going with who we are right now. But that was a little bit of the process of sure. how the book situation happened. And then, <laughs> and then I told my friends like, hey, so like I got to turn this draft by November. This, we signed in April, May. And they're like, are you crazy? I had a draft to, of the whole book. I had to I had two years to write <laughs> my, my manuscript. And I'm like, what? Are you sure you want to do this? Like, you don't want to feel rushed either. Yeah. 
But then the more I spoke to friends who had books, I said, okay, tell me the absolute truth. You had two years to make this book, right? Did you really work on it for two years? Right. Or was it the last three months or six months? Oh, it was the last three or six months that you Mm -hmm. actually worked on it. Yeah. And everyone that I spoke to told me the same thing. Well, like, yeah, it was like the last six months or... Last two weeks. Yeah. 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 No sleep. It's like a school project. (laughs) And really, that's how I was in school, too. Yeah. I was not the person who did my homework the day it was given. Mm -hmm. I did my homework. That morning, yep, yeah, me too. I prefer working like in the middle of the night when no one else is, yeah. too. I can just be in the zone, yeah, you know. There's the thing with the human brain that focus. you can do where if you move the goalpost in, your brain will actually accelerate to, yeah. to that point. So, so like, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> no, it's true, it's a thing. Like, that's why if you have every like hour meetings, let's say we have an hour meeting and then we say, okay, guys, uh, it's not an hour, it's only 30 minutes, you'll like everyone will all of a sudden yeah. feel a pressure and that slight stress will turn into. You solving the thing without having to take the full time in thirty minutes. Yeah, because mm-hmm. if you take the full time, it's like, how are you doing today? Oh, yeah. well, your youngest is sick. Oh, but if how you was your skip weekend? the pleasantries, but just get that mm-hmm. out and then you do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Unless you, unless of course, but sometimes that's, it's good. And to that's know. how Vegas works. Mm-hmm. They don't yeah. have time for that. No. They're just like we're opening in six months. And you're like, oh my god, I love that. And everyone works super fast. I love that. Um, that's great. And they have to. I mean, that's the, the show must go on, yeah. as they say. And really, like, and, and when I, and, and Javier, who was my author, he was, he's very nervous about it. He, I mean, he's a writer. You know, right, I'm yeah. Just, at the end of the day, I'm like, what's going to be you? <laughs> <laughs> it's your fail. Because I'm not sitting it's my there. my face. I think I did, I did a lot of the writing, though, too. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, he did a large chunk of it. Yeah. So I told him, you need to come over to the house. It was, I think, like, 9 or 10 a.m. in the morning. He showed up. And I was like, listen, <laughs> this is gonna happen. You're gonna finish this fucking book. Mm-hmm. You're gonna work your you're ass gonna off. You're gonna sleep over. Then you're gonna take <laughs> shots of mezcal. No, no, you're gonna work your ass off. I'm gonna work your ass off, and we're gonna do this. I, we have no time to play. I don't want any bullshit from you. Mm-hmm. Like, is it gonna happen or not gonna happen? If you're not down, let me, like, oh, help me flexing know. on him. I love no, it. Like, tell so me now because if not, like, we yeah. gotta figure this show. I can yeah. replace you. Man. You don't wanna waste good. your time. I can. <laughs> Well, Shout out to Ethel Gloucester. He's a legend. Javi's a legend. Come on. Javi's a, he's, a, he's on his way. But I was like, well, tell me now, because if you're not, then I can't sign this contract. Mm-hmm. And if, then, I, well, then we got to figure it out. But I got to know if you're committed, yes or no. Yeah. He was like, yeah, you're right. I'm like, I mean, really, like, <laughs> yeah. honestly, like, you could do this shit in a month if you really want to do. Yeah. If it works mm-hmm. every single day, what's the difference between having two years right. and nine months? Mm-hmm. It's just the time that you decide to put something in your mind. It's That's it. that easy. Yeah. It can be done. Yeah, yeah. And I grabbed this great ball of mezcal and it took a shot and we sealed the deal. And then, yeah, we worked a lot. I moved to Oaxaca for a month with my son and we cooked every single day with my mom. He came to Oaxaca for two weeks and then it was just working in my schedule when we had time to spend all day in my house and cook all day and phone calls and editing and going back and forth. Amazing. But it was a priority. That's really cool. Yeah. At the time. Dedication. Yeah. So oh. it comes out October. October 22nd. October 22nd. Love it. What's next? What other projects are you working on um, that you can tell us about? What's next? I wish I worked like that. I wish I was a person that was like, well, next year I have all the stuff lined up. And the year <laughs> after that, I have these projects. I don't projects. think many people work like you that. You know? Um, Serendipity. I guess, I guess yeah. unless you're Beyonce or, right. you know, mm-hmm. Drake. <laughs> Drizzy, knows, my new BFF. You know, you know, that knows like I have this concert tour in right. 2021, right. or I'm album concert. Um, That's yeah, a little different. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's like that. Uh, but you know, for me, I'm just you know, I'm open to opportunities. I'm open to seeing what happens in 2020. Obviously, what's taking priority in our life is the Micheladas business because yeah. that's business that's run with my brother. What's the what's that one called? It's called I Love Micheladas. At I Love Micheladas, yeah, another on Instagram. one. Instagram. We'll um, have Fernando on here. He can tell us he, about he that. He is a Michelada king. Yes. Uh, we are offering a Michelada mix in Vegas too. So cool. we'll in Mama Rabbit. Yes. Oh, that's great. We're doing our mix there. Hopefully, we'll get more distribution there. Um, and just cool. working really hard to get big, large distribution for for that brand. And yeah, you know, going really all in. That's going to be our focus for 2020. And we're opening a house in Oaxaca that we're going to, you know, put up and people can stay there and oh, cool. Cool. curate trips and people want to go to Oaxaca. Oh, When's amazing. that happening? Yeah. Put me on the list. Uh, sometime in, in 2020. We, All right. You know, we're still working on the date of opening. 
Um, but we're very excited about the house um, and just curating trips for people so people That's can awesome. go walk and experience it and I love the connection and experience it like a local. Yeah, cool. Um, and will you guys go too and be like the hosts? <laughs> and some trips, I'm actually hosting. I'm taking my few friends at the beginning of October. Nice. Uh, nice. I was hoping the house would be ready by then. It's not going to. But yeah, construction. <laughs> Don't look at me. Lighting. <laughs> and everything. Lighting. Lighting. The lighting put us lead by times. Like three months. Are you shipping lights in or are you built? Yeah, yeah. we're shipping mm-hmm. lights in from um, the Midwest, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that took a long time. And the, yeah, the it's always the little things. Things that I'm going to right now, my brother is. <laughs> I've got a crew that's based uh, south. So in Tijuana, you, yeah, Tijuana San Diego. If, yeah, if you need them to go. <sighs> Maybe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but that's, you know, that's, that's for me, that's what's exciting for 2020 is it's that and uh, the Michelas. And, you know, again, I'm, so many ideas of things that can happen, but I think it's just time, relationships, patience, and just working every single day towards that bigger goal. Like you never know what it. you're going to need today. Yeah. You never know what can fall through today. Mm-hmm. You, you never know. Someone can call you and be like, Vegas is calling, you know? And I had yeah. no idea that was going to happen for me in 2019. And this is happening now. So... I have no idea what's going to happen. But Your but businesses have good. so many synergies mm-hmm. together. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it can just, they can all we support each other. We do events every year too. So I know those mm-hmm. events always happen around May. Uh, we have a big event called Taco Madness in LA. I mean, like the weekend of Cinco de Mayo. And then we have Zora Ma Social, the weekend of Mother's Day. Yeah, so it's constant. It's yeah. Always. Yeah. I know for sure that's happening in May. Well, I know we've scattered uh, where everyone can find you through this, but do you want to just tell everyone where they can find yeah. you one last time? Just, I mean, my personal Instagram is just at Bricia Lopez, and there you can look at my bio and links to every single thing we spoke mm-hmm. about. You know, yeah. amazing the micheladas, the podcast, the restaurant, um, the book, the pre-order link on the book, um, and here and there, and here and there when I have time, I always put up recipes on my cooking blog, which is moleandmore.com. Million. That I have really let go of for the past few months. <laughs> yeah. But whenever Understandably I, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like to write. I have, I have there a whole list of places, my favorites in Oaxaca, my Oaxaca favorites, because I got that email all the time. Mm-hmm. What do you That's recommend? Smart. So yeah. I just right. put it all in a blog, Perfect. And I blog post, and I'm like, clink, yeah. go here. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. yeah. A beautiful so story. Great. There's an immigrant mm-hmm. story in there, a lot of hustle. If you want to read more about it, pre order the book today. Yeah. Pre order the book. It's called Oaxaca Cooking from the Heart of Mexico. Everywhere you and everywhere. Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target. Amazing. Powell's. I love it. Thank you so much for being on, Bricia. Thank you. Thank you, you, Bricia. We here at Start of the Storefront would love to hear feedback from you. Reach out and let us know what you think about the show. Make sure to give us a rating on iTunes. Anything over five stars is the only way to go. Our music is composed by Double Touch. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Startup the Storefront. For more information on the products and businesses featured on the show, check out the links in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.